Without further ado, I would like to introduce you and help me give a warm kind of welcome to Keith Silverstein. Steen. Stein. Stein Steen. Stein Steen. Frankenstein. Steen. Hey, glad to be here. So, for the people who don't know, uh, please tell us what you do, what you're about, and you know how you have fun. Uh, yeah, my name is Keith Silverstein. I've been a voice actor for 15, 16 years, something like that. I live out in Los Angeles. Uh, I work on video games, original animation, a lot of anime, um, some of the titles. Um, in the video game world, I'm Tor Bjorn in uh, Overwatch. Uh, I'm back to the Crocodile in the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Hunk from the Resident Evil series. Uh, Reaper in Call of Duty Black Ops. All kinds of fun stuff. Uh, uh, Zen from Persona Q. Uh, in terms of uh, animation, I uh, worked on uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Fresh Beat Band of Spies, um, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Naruto, I play Kimi Maro. I don't know how much I, you guys, I need to tell you guys, but I've done all kinds of fun stuff. I'm Hisoka and the Hunter Hunter right now. That's awesome. Yeah, That's all kinds awesome. of fun stuff. All kinds of stuff. Um, could you tell us how you first got your foot in the door and how you got introduced to the business? Animation and, you know, what was that? Uh, yeah, how I actually got started working. Um, actually, my uncle was a great artist, uh, Robert Bryan, and he was doing a showing, and he wanted some of his artwork to be read with poetry. So he called me up and said, I know you do voices. I was doing voices since I was a kid, um, you know, among other things. And I uh, auditioned for it, worked in a real studio. I said, that's what I want to do. I mean, the second I did it, I was like, this is amazing. I can't believe this is a real job. I have to do it. Um, yeah, jumped in some classes. Uh, got an agent and got to work. One of the first uh, gigs that I got, I got to work for Warner Brothers and Chuck Jones on his final project, which is called uh, Timberwolf. Uh, for Warner Brothers, it was an online project. And from there, it's just been, uh, I've just loved it. So I've been like anything I can get my hands on. <clears throat> if you want specifics for how I got into anime or something. That's fine. That's yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind the anime one. I mean, uh, well, I well, the anime was cool. I, I, worked on, I worked on a show called Edgar and Ellen, which we were kind of dubbing. And uh, it was a uh, small show, it was a book series. And I worked with uh, Kirk Thorne was one of the people I hadn't met. Him. I didn't know anybody there. When I was pretty, I was pretty green. And uh, in the lobby, we were kind of just hanging out afterwards. And I heard one of them mention anime, and I was like, Oh, I love anime. I grew up on anime. Anime is awesome. And I ran through a bunch of voices, just kind of doing impressions of anime. You know, just going like, There's always an old person who explains everything, who talks to me. And I went through a bunch of stuff. And Kirk was like, oh, Can I get your card? <laughs> I had no idea that he also like directed and cast stuff and uh, they, you know how experienced he was. So uh, you know, a few weeks later, uh, he brought me into Bang Zoom, and I had a, my first session there, and it was great. He introduced me to Steve Bloom, who's like just sitting in the lobby there. And he's like, "Welcome to the world of anime." Yes, yes, I'm in the world of anime. Yeah. Um, I will open the floor to questions now. Sure. Just... Really? Just real, real personal me. stuff. Too. Okay. Yeah, um, like, right really there. Challenge me. Right there. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Neil, uh, I'm 98.3 FM, Wilhelm, Connecticut. Um, you mentioned you had some kind of association with Chuck Jones. Mm -hmm. From, If I remember correctly, he was involved with the Bugs Bunny and all the Warner yes. Brothers material. Yeah. So you got to work with him in some way, and, and um, what were you able to get from him, being that he was one of the giants of the cartoons. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I didn't get much from him uh, personally. His uh, right-hand man, Steve Fasadi, was uh, kind of running the project. Um, but he was supervising. He was kind of overseeing casting and, and things like that, kind of just approving things along the line. And a buddy of mine was a PA on the, on the project to start out, and he just got me in front of everybody that I need to be in front of, and I just ran through a bunch of voices. And luckily, they ended up saying, we could use you to do a number of characters. And I got to do like three or four original characters for it. I knew what it was at the time. I was a huge fan of Chuck Jones. I mean, it was a project, Timberwolves book was a project, I think in the 60s he came up with and he just never fleshed it out or made it happen. So it was one of his original ideas too that they were moving forward with. And um, for me, just starting out, I got to work with Joe Alasky and Nancy Cartwright. I mean, there were just some amazing people on the project. So uh, it was one of those I didn't, I would have been incredibly nervous, but I didn't even know better at that point. I was just young and I was rare to go. Let's do this, everyone. Who are you? That's fantastic. You know, and, uh, but it was an amazing, amazing experience. It was interesting in my career because that was such a great thing and there was nowhere to go for like a year or so. But like, you know what I mean? Kind of like still struck because I was still waiting tables and the whole, you know, the whole thing it was far before I 
was able to retire from that. So, but it was, it's still to this day, it's one of those things that I cherish, and I know a lot of actors, no matter how experienced and talented they are, didn't get to work on a Chuck Jones project. So it's very near and dear to me that I did that, so, yeah. More questions? Uh, you're right there. Uh, hi, uh, Calvin Williams, Inspire the News. Um, what's your process, uh, what process uh, do you go through to uh, uh, physically and mentally prepare for new roles, uh, figure out new voices for characters and the like? Um, usually when we get an audition or a character is put in front of us, if we're lucky we get an image. I'm a very visual person, so if I've got an image, I, that's the first thing that I gravitate towards. I look at that and like the age and, and whatever the description is. You might look at the image and immediately think, you know, I'm gonna make this guy younger and higher voice, or something flamboyant and high, and the first thing you read is like deep voice, so you immediately then drop that down here or somewhere, wherever you need it to be. Um, if they, their teeth are kind of sticking out, maybe you actually mimic that. You may not look cool, but that's what voiceover is. Um, if they're a big guy, maybe you go with like a, a jowly voice or something like this. Or try dialects or lisps or, or whatever the case is. Um, but for me, if I get a visual, it's that in the description, and the rest is just uh, a combination of experimenting and, and the experimenting and the experience we've done, like I've had over the years. So sometimes I see something and I go, you know what that would be good for? That would be good, great for voice number 84. I don't really remember my voices, but but whatever. At any rate, you go, this. I know the voice for this guy. And either they like that or they don't. And the next thing to do is for the director is to be able to be really versatile. So that if you come in with something you think is absolutely perfect, and you're like, man, this is the voice for this guy. And they're like, yeah, I'm gonna go with something totally different. You gotta be ready to be like, okay, let's do that. What, what ideas did you have? So a lot of it's versatility and just uh, the visual for me. Uh, one more question, we're short on time. Vlad, you know, how many of you, you said you worked with Steve Gould, you just met him uh, yeah. as of called last month. How is it to work with him? Is, uh, seeing you here talk, a lot yeah. of you voice actors seem to be really down to earth, really cool. How do you, uh, everyone you've met at your, uh, feel like they're all the same? Or? Well, they're definitely not all the same. Everybody brings something different to the table, you know, talent wise and personality wise. That's why, thankfully, a good chunk of us get to work because we all have something different. Um, but I, I cannot think of a voice actor. Not that I would list that person now with all these cameras here, but, <laughs> but I honestly can't think of it because I say there's one, but I can't think of anybody that I just really thought was a jerk or a pain to work with. Um, everybody, it's, it's a really tight knit community, and everybody seems to be pretty, pretty welcoming. So even when I, when I was starting out, even now, like, you know, people really kind of welcome you in. You know, Steve's, Steve's one of the nicest guys to work with. I mean, he's so talented, he's had an amazing amount of success, clearly you guys know that, um, but he's super down to earth. And, uh, and that's one of the few things I feel like you can absolutely control at any session is to like, at, at all costs, I want every director and every actor to be like, you know, Keith's a good guy, at all costs, because I have total control over that. I can come in and have a bad day and maybe be like, or be cast in something I probably shouldn't play, and people can go, I don't know how, but you know what, they're gonna go, but you know, he's a great guy. So hopefully, so you know, I, I think that's important. I think a lot of actors feel the same way. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming in today. Um, where can they expect to see you after this uh, press conference? And I've got a, uh, an autograph signing at 11:30, which is going to be right over here, and then I have a panel. Ooh, I'm not even sure you get the schedule. I have a panel. Uh, not for panels. No. See, I have a panel a little later today, maybe three or four o'clock, which is going to be a uh, voiceover for video games. And I think there's a number of us who's going to be four or five panelists for that, so. Look it up. Yeah, look it up. You guys have the app, right? Thank you, Keith, so much for coming in. <laughs>